Well, thank you. And thanks everybody for coming to our October Tinker Talk and Assignment Design Cafe. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Shelley Rose. I'm a Associate Professor of History and Gender Studies at Cleveland State University and um, part of the leadership team for the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative. And I'm co-presenting today with Molly buckley Meridis, who I'll let her introduce herself. <laughs> sure. Thanks, Shelley. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tinker Talk uh, version of the Assignment Design Cafe. I am an associate professor in teacher education with a focus on adolescent literacy and uh, also part of the leadership team of the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative. Happy to be here today. Me too. I'm excited to share this project with everyone. Um, so let me figure out how to share my screen, which should work. All right, does everybody see our Cleveland Teaching Collaborative site? Yes. Awesome. So I'm going to start there. Um, and actually, I'll give a little bit of background. So one of the things we're going to talk about today is the concentrates of place assignment and activity that we've been using actually in a lot of spaces this semester. Um, I've been using it in an introduction to geography class. And um, Molly and I and Chris, who is behind the Cle Cleveland State sign, um, have been using it with the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative <laughs> um, to kind of document our our places, our places of learning, um, places that are, have meaning for us. Um, Heather Capri is here. She's awesome from e-learning and she's been helping my students do this on Pressbooks and she's even created a Concentrates of Place um, entry. So it's really kind of cool. And the idea actually came from a National Geographic educator named Marianne Bracca. And she posted this, you can see in November of 2021, I came across it in during the summer this year on Twitter. Um, and I thought it would be perfect for my introduction to geography students who are all pre-service teachers. I now have um, pre-kindergarten through five majors and um, social studies majors that are going to teach six through 12. So there's a huge range of um, pre-service licensure candidates in my class. And one of the tough concepts to really teach in geography for me across the board is always kind of getting across this notion of place, you know, spaces with meaning. Um, and so I wanted to do this project, which uh, Marianne was inspired by an artist named Tanya Shadrick um, to tell the story of place. And what they did is they grabbed, they got these tins and each student curated a place in her class. She did it with ninth graders, which is kind of neat. Um, and so we went and got the tins because thankfully Marion told us exactly where they were. Um, and we created our own concentrates of place assignments. Um, I created this one here for my um, social studies students and I'll put it in the chat so that people can follow along if you want the assignment and the link to Marianne's site is there too. Um, but you can see you know, the learning outcomes are all about place. One of the cool things is we teamed up with Heather who taught us how to use H5P in our press book. And so the students were able to curate their, their tin online, which I think is super neat, and also kind of fostering this writing for a general audience with the students. And here are the project guidelines. Um, since this is only five minutes, I'll let you read through the assignment yourself. Um, but I wanted to show you some of the student outcomes. Um, this one is Nona's house. <laughs> one of my students did her grandmother's house. Um, for a lot of homes, I had them do the relative location, not the absolute location. We didn't want addresses out on the internet because these are public. Um, so they would post a map. These are all embedded Google Maps, which is kind of neat. It works well with press books. Um, and for place, they described their place and then they used H5P to kind of hotspot different things from the place they curated. So this one is the espresso, <laughs> espresso machine from her grandma's house. Um, lots of students drew things. This is pasta from her grandma's house. <laughs> um, it's kind of neat. And so you can see how they really got a good intimate understanding of place. And then um, in another iteration of this, we hope to bring these tins to the maker space and have the students engrave them. Um, right now, that was a H5P was enough of a lift for me in my class. So we got this off the ground. They put labels and these are actually on display in our history department in a physical display now. Um, the big picture is when I, we started talking about this <clears throat> with CLE teaching, um, 
the team and Molly and everybody, we all got really excited about Marianne's concept and we wanted to curate our learning spaces. And that's kind of where we went next and where we're going to go with, a, with the collaborative. Um, and so you can see I've done a similar thing, but for my learning space. And so for social studies, <clears throat> um, I ended up putting things like a magnifying glass to represent historical thinking and that kind of thing. Um, but what we're really excited about is using this concept to curate our learning places and have our pre-service teachers think about their places of learning, um, maybe even have students think about it. Um, and that's where I'm going to hand off to Molly who has had pre-service teachers really kind of think about this as well. Thanks, Shelley. Um, and maybe I see Paul's question. I think that is the H5P, um, but maybe Heather, if you want to check the chat and just confirm. Yeah, so as Shelly mentioned, we were, um, but we saw this on Twitter over the summer. We're excited for different reasons. And in one of our August conversations as a team, really felt this was an incredible place to think about what we bring as educators to the teaching and learning spaces, instructional spaces that we create. And it's really important um, in the post that I am developing now in draft form, I teach a course for pre-service teachers in English language arts, grade seven through 12. And a very key component of that class is the role and power of autobiography of who we are, like that our beliefs, you know, assumptions, our identities are all things that we carry into the classroom. And that's really important to be reflective of and aware of um, because it matters for the kind of uh, place that we create in that space. So my English language arts teachers are working on this uh, right now and hopefully several of their mentor teachers are. Um, and I brought it to our um, secondary education program area meeting and they are all I have teacher educators and are working on their own tin and it was great because the domino effect one um, one of the members of that program area works with all the supervisors um, for field services and she thought it could really be an important activity because they're trying to support teachers finding their way in their early stages as student teachers um, so I actually do, I don't know if you can see it. So I have just to see how small it is, which is why I think Shelly's students really were drawn to drawing things. They're tiny, like the tins themselves, which I think is a nice challenge because it really does lead you to think, well, what are the pieces and parts of, of what I bring to the classroom that really matter to me? Um, and also what are places to be reflective? As a result, I ended up with Legos, a number of really important things which are huge. My daughter said that way I don't need a picture of them because the Legos represent them. We have a lot of Legos in our house. But for example, as an English language arts teacher, literature is certainly important to what we do. But I have uh, a window, a mirror, and a sliding glass door because that's one of the things Rudine Sims Bishop's concept of, of mirrors, windows, and sliding glass doors that literature should take us, should allow us to see pieces and parts of ourselves, but it should also be a window into other worlds and you know traditions and beliefs and cultures that are not familiar and sliding glass doors that these are not fixed or rigid that that we're, we should be able to cross in and around and through those things too that they shouldn't be fixed. Um, so I will that's a teaser my post will be up you can see the rest of the items uh, later but I wanted to I thought it was helpful to really showcase just how tiny they are um, and again underneath um, I do hope to make a field trip, if possible, to the makerspace, as Shelly mentioned, to just to thread that learning activity as well. Even in our program area, only one person of our teacher education group in that group has been to the makerspace. And it's one of those things, unless you have a real reason, I know we all, it's it's hard to go and practice if, if you're not sure how you want to use it. Um, but it, I think it is fun and it has given the students, it's the third phase. They have a literacy autobiography they do in print form on their own literacy history as an adolescent. Phase two, these are two existing assignments. They interview a current adolescent and then create a two to four minute digital story where they're expected to weave their literacy history and the young person's current literacy life. And I positioned this as a step three, like, okay, let's do something really tangible and physical and concrete to showcase who are you as a teacher and what role as a group we'll talk about what role we think that plays um, for our work in classrooms and schools. That's awesome. 
This is the first time I've heard about Molly's I know, <laughs> iteration. I it's great. It's been in my backpack. <laughs> yeah, I know my backpack rattles because I have so many tins from my myself and the students. And um, and I'll post a link. I'm trying to find the link to the tins. We bought them at Michael's, mm. the coupon, if we could. <laughs> Um, and it wasn't too onerous. Um, but I did want to say too, to kind of, cause I know Paul in particular is interested in maker spaces. We thought this was, it would be a good way, like Molly said, to get teachers and students into maker spaces as the places of learning, right. As another benefit to having the project. So cool. 